Welcome to the Cross Canada Spotlight. I'm Mike Arsenault. Every week we take a look at a handful of the most interesting and entertaining stories produced across the Global News Network. Now I've become a huge golf nut this year. For proof, you can check out my Drive to 300 Yard series for Global News. While well, I'm working my butt off just trying to hit a ball 300 yards, our first story this week from Alberta is about a golf ball that somehow traveled thousands of kilometers. Take a look. Jake B. Hills and Robert Ansley are being introduced. Nice to meet you, Robert. Likewise. <laughs> the boys have been brought together by a golf ball. Yeah, she is right here. A remarkable little range ball. Our fantastic voyage starts at the Cougar Creek Golf Resort. It's about 45 minutes west of Edmonton. Jake's the GM and head pro. We cater a lot to the general public, uh, a lot of charity golf tournaments. Robert's an out-of-work sign manufacturer. So he and his wife decided to hike Australia beginning back in February. If you're going to see the world and its natural beauty, all the wonderful designs that have been given us, then the best way to do that is at walking speed. Cougar Creek features an aquatic driving range, which means the balls float. It's pretty neat to hit them into the water for on purpose, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes, somehow, some way, one of those Cougar Creek range balls went on the world's longest drive. 12,250 kilometers all the way to Hinchinbrook Island, an uninhabited national park off Queensland, a northeastern state in Australia. And it seemed absurd that I would find a golf ball there. But Robert did during a hike in a hollow log. I noticed something out the corner of my eye, like this yellow color. A Cougar Creek range ball. That it somehow got into the waterways, somehow landed up in the Pacific on the, the western seaboard of North America made its way across the Pacific. Well, the most absurd possibility seemed the most likely. But this was no unplayable lie. It's the honest to goodness truth. So Robert did some fact finding and eventually tracked down Jake to share his incredible story. To hear about, you know, where exactly it was found and how wild it is that it actually got there is, is remarkable. Plus, that's one tough golf ball. When Jake showed me that ball now, I'm amazed that the balls look identical. So whoever the manufacturer of your golf balls is, he would probably want to know that he's made a jolly good product. No one will ever know how the ball ended up on a desolate island in Australia, but wow, what a tremendous tale. I still find it quite funny that I got to speak to some gentlemen on the other side of the world about a golf ball. John Sexsmith, Global Sports. That is just nuts how that ball traveled so far. But I don't think I could use a driving range where the goal is to hit a ball into the water. That would mess up my game too much when I hit the actual course. I would end up subconsciously aiming for the water every time. To New Brunswick now, where Moncton High School students are working to help reconnect a family of Syrian refugees in Canada. Moncton High School staff and students are rallying around these two Syrian brothers whose family is in dire straits. Mohammed and Majid al Houdi and their mother and sister became Canadian refugees after coming to New Brunswick in 2019 after living in a refugee camp in Jordan for two years. Life has not been easy for the family. They need help and I would like to think that, the, that some people in the community will see that. Mohammed, 21, and his older sister have a genetic condition known as retinitis Pigmentosa, which causes progressive vision loss. I lost my 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 side vision like in when I was 13 years old. So since coming to Canada, it's been up to younger brother Majid to be the family chauffeur. I get my mom to grocery, and uh, if she have a appointment, I go with her. But just over a month ago, Majid, who has the same, less severe eye condition, had his license taken away after being told by his eye doctor that it was no longer safe for him to drive. It was a major blow for the family, already living on limited means. We have a very hard situation here. The boys are now pleading with the Canadian government to fast-track their oldest brother's Canadian refugee application. The 35-year-old and his family have been living in a refugee camp in Jordan for five years now. 
We want my brother to come to here to help us. Students at the school have started a letter writing campaign calling on people to contact federal cabinet minister and New Brunswick MP Dominic LeBlanc on behalf of the boys. To ask for his help with getting Mo Image's family here from Syria. Knowing that getting the family here quickly will be an uphill battle, especially amid COVID-19, the students have also started a GoFundMe campaign. They're hoping to raise enough funds to help the family with transportation costs until Big Brother can arrive, which for these two boys would be life-changing. Change my life from zero to ten. Shelley Steves, Global News, Moncton. It is heartwarming to see the community come together for that family, and I hope all three brothers can be reunited. I can't fathom being forced to live in a refugee camp for multiple years, the hardships that family has endured, and then on top of that, dealing with their degenerative eye conditions. Fingers are crossed for a happy resolution. Back to Alberta for another example of helping those in need. A dry cleaner in Calgary is offering free services to people wanting to dress to impress in job interviews. Hi there. Hi. Hard at work in the family business, son David Would you like your receipt? and his dad, Jonathan. At it for the past 15 years, they know how looking good can make you feel good. You could feel a lot more confident in a freshly cleaned and pressed outfit rather than something you know, you've had in your closet for a while. Now offering their skills for free during the pandemic to anyone out of work and wanting to make a good impression in a job interview online or in person. Because we personally know a lot of people who are unemployed and you know they're going through a rough time. I think it's a great idea. More people should step up to the plate and, and help these people that don't have uh, any jobs. This certainly will give them an opportunity to get something cleaned and, uh, and without having to uh, put out that kind of money that they really don't have. I mean it's been a long time this COVID uh, going on. The spirit of giving is something Jonathan's familiar with from his time serving as a pastor after moving his family to Alberta from South Korea 20 years ago, eager to lend a hand now. This is a hard time, so we're just getting together, helping others. Yeah, we like to do that. So far helping one man with cleaning ahead of an interview. They're working in the oil and gas sector, which is, you know, very hard hit right now. So we offered it to them and they were very happy with it. They're hoping more will come forward. We're living together, not just alone, so we share with our hearts. A chance to give back to a country that's given them so much. The opportunity we've been presented, we're so thankful for it. I think it's important, especially when it's a tough time to you know, pay it forward and help our neighbors. Thanks again. Hey, have a nice day. You too. Gil Tucker, Global News. There really is nothing like putting on a freshly pressed suit. And removing the potential worry about clean clothes from the job interview process is an ingenious way for David and Jonathan to pay it forward. Okay, well, the Olympics are still scheduled to take place in July. It remains to be seen whether or not they will actually happen. But one Montreal high schooler booked his ticket to Tokyo from over 30 feet in the air. In front of almost no crowd at the FINA Diving World Series in Tokyo, this pair from the West Island performed one last dive in the men's 10-meter synchronized final. That should be good enough. That should be good enough for Canada. It was good enough for the bronze and, more importantly, solidified their spot at the Tokyo Olympics. It's always been something I've uh, strived to accomplish since I was young um, and, like, actually... Uh, Qualifying is pretty unreal. Even though the 18-year-old just qualified for the Olympics, the teenager still worries about graduating high school. It's really quite stressful, I'll be honest. The grade 11 student says managing his workload has been difficult, but credits his teachers at John Rennie, who are eager to welcome him back. He's going to be, I think, a bit of a, of a celebrity here when he returns, but he, he's definitely doing very well and... and um, He's very much on track to, to graduate. Zomber Murray was five when he was recruited by the Point Claire Aquatic Club. I remember Nathan uh, fondly when we discovered him. He was a, a very small little boy and his dad was tossing him up and down in the summer pool just, just nearby here. And uh, that's what first sort of caught our eye. The diver's former coach says the teen was a natural from the start. Now he's one of five athletes from the Point Claire Aquatic Club to qualify for the games, including his partner Vincent Riendo. I got to sort of watch him growing up uh, 
And so, and now I'm diving for them. So it was really, it was really, uh, really cool. The diving duo will travel back to Montreal on Friday to prepare for the games. Zomber Murray is confident he can still qualify in a solo event. COVID's a little bit of a, a blessing in disguise. It really sucked that it got delayed by a year. Uh, but I think that it gave a lot of us a lot of time to really focus on ourselves. Now he just hopes COVID doesn't delay his Olympic debut in July. Olivia O'Malley, Global News, Montreal. Now, I've only been on a 10-meter diving board once in my life, and it took me five minutes just to summon the courage to jump off. I can't imagine then having to perform a full routine in the air before hitting the water. Also, it's really incredible that Nathan's coach could see he had the potential to be a great diver at just five years old. From the world of sports to the world of art, Calgary artists with developmental disabilities are having their work showcased around the world. David Opong getting down to work on a new piece, a drawing of a mask. An artist who's really making his mark with another recent work called Resiliency and Coronavirus. Resilience means finding strength and hope when everything seems to be going bad. And I picture dark clouds representing sadness and the sun represents happiness and hope. David's piece just symbolizes what we're all going through right now. Creating it as part of his work with the National Access Arts Centre in Calgary. Our organization supports a community of about 350 artists with primarily developmental disabilities. Now David and a dozen other artists at the centre are hitting the world stage, their work purchased by the federal government. This is so groundbreaking. This marks the first time that our country's Foreign Affairs Ministry is partnering with the Disability Arts Organization. This means that those works will soon travel to all corners of this globe, moving through either embassies, ambassadors' residences, or cultural centers. Hopefully to go to Ghana, where David is from. So we're very excited that like he has this opportunity. Super proud of what he has achieved. What he has is called like the intellectual disability. Sometimes he um, operates from a grade three to grade four level. Art makes a huge difference in his life. It kind of boosts his morale, gives him more confidence and be able to express himself. What I like about doing art is how the painting colors look bright. I want people to look at it and be happy. Gil Tucker, Global News. Congratulations are definitely in order for David and all of those other artists. That's a very cool initiative and a unique way to sprinkle some Canadian content across the globe. That's it for the Cross Canada Spotlight this week. Be sure to watch Global News Weekend Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. on the Global TV app. For now, stay tuned for more news and weather.